Oh, oh, I am starving. I haven't eaten in a week. I, I gotta do something about this. I'm starting to hallucinate. I'm feeling delirious. You know, for a second, I actually thought to myself, the 8-Bit Eric YouTube channel wasn't that bad. Wasn't that bad? What is wrong with me? I gotta go to that fridge, open it up one more time, and lower my standards and eat the first thing I see before I do something really stupid. 8-Bit Eric, what was I thinking? Ugh. How is this all I have? Ooh. An opened packet of crackers. Oh, come on. This doesn't go in the fridge. Who put canned beans in here? Oh, there's a yogurt. That expired January 17th. All right, that's just great. So I have nothing to eat. That's seriously everything in my fridge? A can of beans and a terrible Nintendo Switch game? This is not radical. I mean, it can't be this bad in January. My last video did pretty good. Let's see how much that made. Are you serious? Ooh. Well, thank goodness for the Patreons. There has to be something else I could do this month to try and pay bills. I mean, wait, when did this game get on my Switch? Oh my God, yes. This is it. This is what's gonna do it. Yes. Yes. Yes! Cave Blazers on Nintendo. Okay, why are you looking at me like that? You could tell, couldn't you? You could tell that that wasn't me at the start of the video. It was actually Wolf Den. They're on me. You can't slip anything past these guys. Look, the only reason I used Wolf Den, not copied, not I didn't steal it. I borrowed it because I, I, I didn't think you guys would be able to tell the difference. I mean, well, we look so similar. All right, fine, you got me. While we do look pretty similar, we're completely different entities. Hmm, what does that remind me of? <laughs> Cave Blazes is actually a lot like Dead Cells. Ah, oh, come on, man, seriously? You can't go jumping the gun ahead of me like that and not only take my title, but twist it in the other direction. Now what clickbaity title am I gonna- Oh, who am I kidding? I got loads. <laughs> Let me start from the beginning. Cave Blazers released today on the eShop, and it's a very, very addicting game. And it is, it really is, a lot like Dead Cells. But unlike me plagiarizing and copying Wolf Den at the start of this video, Cave Blazers did not copy Dead Cells despite how similar it is. In fact, Cave Blazers actually released the same month as Dead Cells in May of 2017. Now, it did release two weeks after Dead Cells, but I mean, come Come on, I don't know much about video game development, but I don't think two weeks is enough time to see someone else's idea, steal it, and then throw it out on Steam. No, actually, it just so happens both these developers saw a need in the market for an action roguelike platformer and decided to capitalize. And we see this happen with movies all the time, like Armageddon, The Deep Impact, Babe and Gordy, The Prestige and The Illusionist, Chasing Liberty and First Daughter, Volcano and Dante's Peak, Ants and Bugs Life, Turner and Hooch and Canine, Friends with Benefits, No Strings Attached, Shark Tale and Finding Nemo, Mirror Mirror Snow White, White, Red Planet, Mission to Mars, Top Gun, Iron Eagle, The Wild in Madagascar, Strip Tease and Showgirls, The Truman Show on EdTV, The Cave, The Descent, The Cop Out, The Other Guys. And it's a similar thing with Dead Cells and Cave Blazers. <clears throat> I apologize for my voice. Kim got me sick again. This is the second time in like a month. I'm so frustrated. So yes, while they may have released around the same time and they may be very similar games, there's actually a lot of differences in Cave Blazers that makes it its own unique experience. To start with, just the look and presentation of Cave Blazers gives this action roguelike platformer a completely different feel. It doesn't confine your gameplay to narrow pathways, rather, you find yourself in a massive cave to explore with different twists and turns every single time you die and restart the game. Because of the huge areas you have, it allows you to fire your bow in any direction and you do that using the right thumbstick. So if you're going around using your bow a lot, it actually feels kind of like a twin stick shooter. So the game always starts you in your little base of operations where you have access to a few different modes and options. For example, you can customize your character, which I love. Everything from your hair to your beard to your outfit, you can customize it all. And how do you get all of these customizations? By playing the
the game. Every time you do a playthrough, it, it tallies up your gold and your kills, and then when you die, and trust me, ya will, a lot, it'll tally up that playthrough, and hopefully, if you didn't suck too much, you'll actually get to unlock some things. Which is actually a very rewarding system, and it makes the deaths a little less painful. The deaths really sting. I hate when I'm actually doing okay in a playthrough, and a death comes out of nowhere. There's a moment where your heart dies and your soul gets crushed, but then you see that little bar pop up and you start unlocking things and you think, ah, well, I'll customize my character and I'll go back in for another round. You can also access the perks you unlock along the way in this hub area, and the perks you equip will drastically change the flow of the game. One of the perks allows me to shoot arrows into a wall and then it will create like a tripwire beam, and if any enemy walks into that, they'll take a hit of damage. So any playthrough I have that equipped, you'll actually see me intentionally missing enemies and trying to set up tripwires and playing a lot more stealthily and waiting for the enemies to come to me and kill themselves on the booby traps I set up. Which is completely different to playing with something like a melee buff where you're running in with your sword and swinging like crazy, suddenly I'm playing all stealthy and sitting off in the distance. And if the game already didn't have a ton of replayability, that right there extends that even further. This could easily be your next Nintendo Switch addiction. I've only had the game for a couple days now, but I have been playing it non-stop. And the kicker here is that it's actually insanely cheap. For its price, $14.99, this is an absolute steal. And once you play this and you dive into it and discover how much content there is and how many hours of gameplay there is and how fun it is to play, you're gonna end up looking back at your credit card statement and make sure you weren't dreaming when you paid $14.99 for it. Now, in my opinion, this game is painfully difficult. And just when you think you're getting the hang of it, you're finally getting to those boss fights a little more frequently, and you're finally able to actually take one of the bosses down with relative ease. As soon as you're thrown into the next part of the game, the difficulty level seems to be stepped up by a billion, and you have to start getting good at it all over again. But of course, when you die in that part, you go back to the start, and it's luck of the draw as to how well you're gonna do next time, and if you're even gonna get to that first boss again. And I really appreciate the fact that you do not have to wait long to get upgrades and abilities as you play. Obviously when you start a run, you start bare bones, nothing essentials, you have your sword and your bow and that's it. But again, you don't have to wait until the second level or the third level or the boss fight to actually get an upgrade. No, they just start throwing them at you and you have a ton to pick and choose between. You can get items from smashing open crates or chests or killing enemies. You'll also find statues that'll have certain items locked behind them and you'll have to use the gold you've been collecting along the way to break them out and equip them. Also with those statues, you can find ones that you can pay to fully heal yourself. And then you find really interesting ones where you pay with your own health, which is a huge risk. But the reward is that it will give you a really strong ability. The only downside is you never know what the ability is gonna be until you've paid your health. And the abilities you can find lying all over the place. Sometimes there'll be an area where you can pick one of three abilities or sometimes the abilities will just be scattered all over the place. You also get specific abilities for defeating specific bosses. Like one of the bosses just gives you a double jump, which, ah, oh, that's the best one. But obviously the abilities plays a big part in making this game so addicting. Because it feels amazing stacking all of these abilities on top of each other. And then you start to combine that with all the cool items you find along the way. Finding a new sword or bow that has better damage, or maybe effects like poison or fire. Or even just screw those weapons and finding completely different ones, like an axe or a shotgun. Even if you took the same player with the same playthrough and made him do it twice, with with two different perks, you're suddenly going to create two very different playstyles and two very different run-throughs. The possibilities seem to be endless, and that's why you always want to dive back in just to see what's different the next time. It gets addicting because you kind of just want to walk through that door and just see what's on the other side. You might tell yourself, I'm not going to play a whole nother round, I'm not going to get to the boss or anything, I just want to see what's right out that door, maybe there's a cool weapon. But no matter what it is, it sucks you in and it makes you want to keep going. And something I really like about this game is you don't only have this one mode to play in. If you decide to mix things up, there's a couple other things you can do, like the daily challenges. Once a day you can attempt these and they'll throw crazy stipulations at you and it just helps to mix up the gameplay. But if you feel like something different that isn't limited to once a day, there's also an arena mode. And this mode is really cool. So it pits you just in one area and enemies will keep spawning. And of course, 
It's stupidly difficult. But if you can manage to get through the wave of enemies, you'll be presented with a bunch of items to choose from. You only get to pick one, which can be very frustrating, but that's part of the challenge. I always feel like I need to heal over anything else, but then I end up going into the next round with no actual improvements to myself and I get my butt kicked anyway. Every time you beat a wave, you improve yourself a little bit more, you're becoming stronger and stronger, but of course the enemies and the waves are getting harder and harder. And if you die, you get to go straight back in and try again. It's just another very addicting mode. And honestly, just this mode in itself, you could have released just this on the eShop for 10 bucks and I still would have bought it and had a lot of fun with it. So the fact that it's just an additional mode on top of an already very complete package that's only $15, you're starting to see why I find so much value in this title. So that's the incredibly addicting and stupidly cheap Cave Blazers on Nintendo Switch. I honestly plan to talk about it longer than this, but my voice is killing me. I just have to stop. And hey, this gives you a chance to explore the rest of the game for yourself anyway. What do you guys think about Cave Blazers? <coughs> uh.